Uh, with all these changes to power and pursuits, we also want to make sure there is plenty for players to sink their teeth into over the next year. For the last few years, we've been trying to attack this problem by trying to squeeze one more morsel of new content in each release. But I think we can get better results with a different strategy, making the existing depth of the incredible content of De uh, Destiny 2 more valuable to new and returning guardians. Let's start with one of our most evergreen rituals, the Crucible. Player versus player combat is here to stay in Destiny 2, as we think it's one of the most inherently replayable parts of Destiny experience. Last year, we injected several new modes into PvP, from Rift to Eruption to Fortress. We're excited for some of these game modes to get more face time in the core ritual experience, but we're not done adding the variety of the ways you engage in PvP. In Season of Defiance, we're looking at getting Countdown back into the game hmm, right. along with a respawn variant of the game mode we call Countdown Rush, where players must detonate to fuse both bombs on, on the map before the round ends. We also aim to run a series of Crucible Labs, including a mode where player sandbox is dramatically changed, weapon damage, ability uptime, and even ammo are also adjusted in a new mode tentatively called Checkmate uh, Control. Uh, this mode will reward players who use their smarts and their skills. So if the only way the enemy has been able to shut you down in the past is a solo blade barrage, they might be in trouble. Uh, this isn't all we have planned for modes, so keep your eye on labs for more classic and all new modes later this year. Um, Halo Infinite is a game that you and I have both been expressed frustration with multiple times. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that made it really rewarding early on when it only had like six maps and is the only reason we were able to stick with it as long as we could is the number of ways that I could screw with things because <laughs> I'm the one that hosts our, our yeah. lobby. Um is, is pretty vast. And so I would spend a couple hours after each Wednesday night building out new modes for the following week kind of like a dungeon master in in uh in in like a little rpg campaign of some kind uh and so like i could screw with modes and it added a lot of variety to the game where the lack of maps and the lack of basic ranked slayer modes and stuff was there so the fact that they're going to like try to bring this stuff in at a more native level um really excites me the idea of just saying like all right uh this week in crystalline conflict in final fantasy 14 uh, limit breaks are going to generate 300% faster. Go. And like, you just have yeah. no idea what it's going to do. Is it going to be balanced? Probably no. not. But like, you just say like, you know, and then we'll put some cool cosmetic behind it, do it 10 or 12 times, have a lot of fun, have a lot of laughs. It's probably not balanced. Yeah, we'll have our balanced mode too. But it's, sometimes it's just nice to just play something for the fun of it. And a little bit of chaos goes a long way. Um, now, we think that a steady stream of novel game modes and a reigning of player power is going to do a lot for the health of our PvP ecosystem, but we're still committed to keeping true to our Crucible Maps plan, which means the arrival of Meltdown in Season of the Deep, a brand new Vex Network map in Season 22, and the return of Citadel in our last season before the final shape. Uh, we will also be looking at our existing maps and doing a spawning uh, return uh, pass on many of them this year to improve how various modes flow. In matchmaking, we still don't feel we've nailed the trade-off between fair matches and good connections. We still need to get features like a dynamic skill ranges in-game to allow for players across all skill levels to get consistently high-quality connections in their matches. As we continue to adjust algorithms and improve connection qualities, we are also turning our eyes towards lobby balancing, where we aim to construct matches with a more consistent skill spread among players on both teams. We also want to continue to zoom out and make sure that we're upgrading the meta systems that encourage folks to play PvP. Uh, think of this like the Iron Banner revamp, our recent increases to Iron Banner reputation and our commitment to having three Iron Banner matches per season this year. While we haven't settled on all the final details, we are currently looking at the rewards and matchmaking structures of our Trial of Osiris and would like to push more updates uh, to that mode this year in order to more consistently keep the population at healthier levels. Finally, in competitive, we want to improve the speed at which players climb the rank uh, that most matches their Crucible skill to ensure it's clear why you won or lost the specific number of ranked points shown after a match. Yes, I'm excited for this. This is one of the things that I felt like, I, you know, one of the things that brought me back with Witch Queen was their investment back into PvP and then bringing in more maps, more modes. I think this is going to be uh, really exciting for me to see, uh, especially with that those adjustments uh, as well. So honestly, I thought they've done a, a really decent job uh, this year 
and it's going to be neat to see what the impact of the skills and their, I mean, their adjustments to difficulty will be uh, kind of adding in. Now, for the next section, it says exotic mission rotator. It says trials won't be the only thing getting a uh, getting love as far as rituals go. So let's talk about the PVE side of things. Over the years, we've added a ton of great exotic missions like Prestige and Operation Seraph Shield to Destiny 2. This year, not only will we continue to create new exotic missions, but starting in Season 22, we'll be adding in an exotic mission rotator. So this is some of the stuff that's got Sunset. Uh, one of the things like Zero Hour is like just this awesome mission where you it's just so good. Like they're, these missions that they put in like are like in my mind, like pinnacle PVE mission content. And to see them bringing this in a, a, from a rotation perspective, I, I think I'm really excited to see that. Now, like our uh, legacy raids and dungeon rotators, the exotic mission rotator will feature exotic missions from the past that rotate on a weekly cadence and offer great rewards for players willing to dive into some classic content. Season 22, this rotator will contain the exotic mission from seasons 13, 16, and 19. Prestige, Vox Obscura, and Operation Share of Shield. This framework implemented, we hope to use this rotator in the future to bring some of Destiny 2's most classic missions back to the fold. I personally would love for people to be able to play Zero Hour who never had the chance to play that mission. Go ahead. So, yeah, so Final Fantasy XIV, because story is mandatory, was forced to, in the, in, in the very design of what the game is, include a roulette system that was there on day one of ARR, uh, and it is a massive part of what we still do today. And so that system has grown and evolved and changed in what it means to different players. Uh, but roulettes are a big part of the community as a whole. And what that has accidentally done is a side perk that they could have never foreseen. And Yoshi Peace talked about how he did not foresee Final Fantasy becoming as widely successful and acclaimed as it has. You just could never have banked on a game relaunching and having this kind of success. That roulette system has allowed old content to age much more gracefully than most games can. Now, if you have a lateral system like Guild Wars 2, it's not necessarily as necessary. As long as the rewards for that content are interesting, it'll live entirely on its own feet. But in any game that moves forward and funnels players into new playlists, uh, such as the vertical progression systems of World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, or like Destiny has, where they have 9,000 different pricing models they've tried over the years, and you have no idea what's going on with all the different seasons. Uh, it's really hard to keep track of all this. And so then what ends up happening is they're trying to release content at this cadence and you're trying to wow players. And so there is this, it's called like Frodericks or Herod's uh, treadmill or whatever, mm -hmm. where there's this idea that whatever peak you've lived at before, wherever, whatever the best you've ever normalized your life in whatever aspect, the most money you've made in a year, uh, the most, most fit you've ever been in a year, the happiest you've been in a relationship in a year, that is now the number to beat. And getting back to it, you will feel simply adequate. Uh, and anything below that will not feel good. And so if you've ever made a, a million dollars a year, something crazy, and you made it multiple years in a row, then now making anything less than that feels like a waste of your time. And that applies to everything, including video games. And so the problem is that if you're used to releasing five raid bosses every three months or something, and that's what you always do, there's nothing special about it anymore. And if mm. you release six, it would feel amazing. But if you drop to four, what the mm. hell? I've been yeah. lied to. So the downside of that is you've made an, a never-ending hungrier and hungrier player population. And the only way to satisfy them is to find a way to release content to them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And so one of the best ways to do that is to be able to use your backlog. Imagine if you had a hundred bosses that were already designed and implemented in your video game. It'd be really great if those did something. Uh, and so that's something that I think World of Warcraft does a little bit of, could, be, we could do a lot better of. Uh, and it sounds like that's what Destiny wants to do. Like, what if we went back and said, okay, we're going to keep doing new stuff. Absolutely. But in addition to that, there's all these experiences that maybe you took a season off or something like that. And mm. those could be new to you at a fraction of the cost because they are already in the game. Um, yes. So I, I think that's really exciting, and I yeah. think it's something that an aged MMO needs and a new MMO won't see the benefit of. But the time to start investing in it is when you're new. So like you have to spend all this money making this system function when you're brand new, planning for the future. It's what you and I talked about with the trust system in Final Fantasy. The most exciting time for the trust system introduced in Shadowbringers, in my opinion, was the day Endwalker went live. And I said that when they announced the trust system. Mm -hmm. It's cool now. It's going to be way, it's going to look like it's going to look like clairvoyance when you're two, four, ten years from now. Yeah, down the road, you're going to be like, oh, wow. Yeah, oh, your your game doesn't do that? Our game does, you know. 
Um, now, refreshing the strikes, another area of PvE that we think we can have a big effect on is the Vanguard Rituals. We have already talked about some are going to be talking about matching Vanguard Ops playlists, more engaging by raising the challenge level. But with Lightfall, we're also going to shake up some of these activities inside the playlist. This effort will begin by refreshing the Lake of Shadows. Cool. And the Arms Dealer Strikes. Awesome. I actually did those the other day. Both activities had their objectives and encounters reimagined and upgraded to match the combat engagement of these levels and some of our more recent strike entries such as light blade and proving grounds in addition we are also taking strikes that have not been updated recently such as exodus crash and the inverted spire and dramatically reducing their pre presence in the vanguard arms playlist while eliminating them from nightfall rotations these strikes will be available uh for direct launch but until they get brought up to this engagement parity with some of our more recent vanguard content they will not show up as frequently as part of this ritual gameplay now and aside from the strikes, we're also going to be upgrading the battlegrounds into grid with Vanguard Ops alongside Lightfall in Season 16 and Season 19 battlegrounds will be added to the Vanguard Ops playlist. And we really like the fast enemy filled chaos of battlegrounds. So this year, we'll also be adding a selection of battlegrounds as Nightfalls. Oh, wow. That's that is awesome. Uh, this process will begin with the Mars Heist Battleground being part of the Nightfall rotation in Season of Defiance, and we expect more Battlegrounds to be following suit each season. Now, we're excited to see how players tackle the Season of Defiance first Nightfall rotation, where four out of the six Nightfalls will be new or refreshed content coming to the Grandmaster rotation for the first time. We expect even older Nightfalls to feel rekindled by their new layout options, since the match game modifier is also being retired from Nightfalls and will launch in Nightfall fall or light fall <laughs> yes uh as we get further away from our light fall in our seasonal schedule we're going to make some targeted changes to ritual content based on what we've observed about why players engage in this content while we don't expect these changes to make it in the season of defiance over time we want to start pushing both more rewards to ritual content and more options to engage with our ritual content this will include changes such as moving the initial source of obtaining exotic armor away from the lost sectors and back into core rituals, and no longer asking players to earn all three of the ritual pursuit ornaments in seasonal challenges and allowing players to earn more new rewards and complete more of their weekly challenges by player content of their choice, not just in the newest uh, seasonal activity playlist. This balancing, uh, rebalancing, of objectives and rewards is going to be a slow burn over the year of Lightfall, and we're going to take more of a direct approach in our last season of the year, dedicating a significant amount of development time to a more core ritual focused season. While this season will have plenty of new activity and story content, we want to take this time right before the final shape to crisp up our core rituals and pursuits as we head into the final expansion of the Light and Darkness saga. This last seasonal effort is just now getting underway, so expect more details as we get further into the year. So as they talk about this, rebuilding core systems, mm -hmm. reusing old content, this starts to sound a lot like the various kind of affirmations that some of these older MMOs have had to do as they start to wrap up their narrative sagas. Because historically, in a franchise, wrapping up your narrative saga means the end of a game. Whether it be a single player game or a trilogy, it tends to mean the end because it's the end of the story. So when mm. the credits roll, the credits roll. But in an MMORPG, that's not necessarily what a player wants. That was a really great end to the story. I feel that Endwalker was really great. I feel that End of Dragons, um, you know, while I'm not caught up in the story in that game, it's been relatively well received. Uh, and I feel that WoW is due for a refresh. And so as they talk about turning over a new leaf, Putting the end of that chapter without putting an end to the game is something that uh, players have to speculate about. And it feels like, why would I invest in this final chapter if I haven't been along for the ride, if you're just going to hit reset on the other side with something like Destiny 3 or Guild Wars yeah. 3 or WoW 2 or whatever. And so the way they get out in front of that is they talk about investments, new mm -hmm. servers, um, updates to hardware based things like bringing Guild Wars to uh, DirectX 11 or major core system upgrades where you talk about something that is substantially expensive. So when you talk about rebuilding core systems in the final season of this expansion, as you look to go into the final expansion, that doesn't sound like to me the sort of thing that would be worth the effort if it was only going to last one more year. So do you think after the final shape, they're going to let Guild Wars 2 go to rest? Or do you think this is kind of a soft confirmation that there might 
be just Guild Wars 2 beyond this light and dark saga. I feel like Guild Wars 2 and Destiny 2 have that very same kind of like, uh, you know, ecosystem. So it's the fu it's funny to me that you use that same uh, that, that game in reference to this because they were both kind of in this boat. I do feel like Destiny 3 should happen at some point. I would like it if they just called it straight up Destiny and you end up kind of looking at it that perspective. But they could continue to add in expansions. So honestly, right now, I think it's really anybody's guess. We, you know, if they don't come out this year and announce like, hey, new expansions or whatever, like I, I maybe once they finish, we finish the story of Lightfall and they decided to do these seasons, maybe that's when they make these kind of announcements. Or it could be that you see the final shape and then, and so the final shape would be 2024 and that would last a year. So by 2025, here's destiny three guys, here's the next, you know, 10 year plan for this, you know, for this game, we're going to just keep going and finding some way to kind of make that, that connection. Here's the, you know, the core reasons why everything's kind of, you know, starting over. I, I don't know. Like, honestly, part of me wants that, that new, you know, like start, but knowing that doing that, you'd end up you know, what's the cost? What's the cost of the players? Is it, is it better to continue to enhance this core experience uh, and go forward from there? Uh, whew, uh, I don't know. A lot of what we have planned this year is right around the corner, including big features like commendations and guardian ranks with the launch of Lightfall. The commendation system, again, like, like Final Fantasy 14 and Destiny, like there's a lot of crossover between these communities. Uh, this is the first step in creating stronger connections between guardians this year. We can uh, be hard to reach out to someone you don't know. Commendations are an icebreaker, a simple way of saying thanks to players that you appreciate playing with. Over time, players will accumulate a ton of different combinations that will help build the story of how others in Destiny 2 perceive you. Certain combinations like Pace Setter or Saint's Favorite are only available to be given out in Trials of Osiris, while others are perceptive and knowledgeable are given out to the raid and dungeon content. Eventually, combinations you earn will become a history of where you've been and what you've done. With these combination systems, those at the highest level of guardian ranks have to be uh, will have to proven to be folks that consistently appreciate by others in the community. Sometimes it will be because there are the kinds of people who are willing to use heavy lifting when organizing a large group of players. Sometimes it will be because they aren't the kinds of people comfortable speaking up, and they are always doing what is needed to be done and to help the group overcome the obstacle in front of them. Over the last few weeks, we've been playing with a bunch of Heist Battlegrounds and every so often get matched with a pair of folks that look like they've got a lot of synergy with, and we end up absolutely crushing the Hive infested infestation. The joy has to come with a tiny sense of regret that not living just a few weeks into the future will be able to pass along a couple of accommodations to show my thanks. I will wait for Lightfall to be everyone's hands so we can have an opportunity to grow the Guardian uh, with our fellow Guardians. I'll let you take, the, take over the next section. Commendations represent the f just the first step of reaching out to one another. If players want to generate a deeper relationship, they need to have the opportunity to communicate. For the last few years, Destiny 2 has often felt too lonely for those who aren't playing with folks they know. In order to improve this, we'd like to invest in the overall chattiness in Destiny 2. <laughs> Bold. Uh, as games, as games Bold like League of Legends are like, the appropriate amount of player interaction is no player interaction as they start to like ban chats in some of these games. It's like, we think chattiness is, <laughs> is good. Uh, bold. Uh, this is not something that's going to happen right away with Lightfall, but we'd like to start opening up more lines of communication between our players in the future. Eventually, we want to change our game-wide text chat channels so you have more frequent opportunities to reach out to a fellow Guardian. Over time... We'd like to continue to invest in deeper chat moderation, better filtering, and bigger features like speech to text. We think that text chat is a great way for players to communicate with one another at their own pace while still retaining some anonymity. <laughs> that's, that's the problem, is it how anonymous somebody is. All right. Uh, this does not mean that text chat is going to become required for Destiny 2. We still plan on allowing anyone inside Destiny 2 the ability to avoid text chat entirely. Meaning they will never automatically be added to, to a social text chat. We also plan to allow anyone the option to quickly leave channels on a case-by-case -case basis if the chat is trending in a way that makes their game experience worse. <laughs> this is going to be very new for Destiny, so I expect that we'll be learning a lot from these first steps in tweaking our plans with chat and how various channels are as we go forward and get feedback from all of you. The last piece of our social puzzle for the year is our biggest, Fireteam Finder. 
Initially, we hope to get our take on a first class in-game looking for group tool in players' hands this summer with season 22, alongside our next reprised raid, making it a perfect pairing for new raiders. But as our plans become more solidified, we realize that the features needed to make a, uh, and to create a truly top-notch LFG experience, top-notch LFG.